I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Bill Burr, by the way, has this great sketch about... Oh wait, Phil, what'd you say? No, I was just looking how fa at my how fat my face looked in those videos. The <laughs> by the way, if you guys don't know this, if you're listening to this or just haven't noticed a perspective on anything, Phil has lost a chunk of weight, and we've noticed. Yeah. We actually we we gave, we gave him nice compliments. We also yeah. asked him whether or not he got a tape for him, but he said no. So, uh, <laughs> how, how much you down? Phil? Explanation: a whole, whole bunch of uh, cocaine would probably do that too, but. <laughs> and crystal meth would probably do it even better. But My um, teeth are good, so no meth is being used. Okay? Yeah, that's, there you go. Uh, how much are you down? Uh, between, I would say about somewhere between 42 to 45 pounds now. That's Yikes. awesome. Wow, that's amazing. That's Thank amazing. I mean, I, I, I get happy when I lose uh, two pant sizes. That's about <laughs> it. Because I, I, I fluctuate, especially beginning of the year. And then, like right now, I'm in my fat phase. Uh, I, I'm. Already back at the gym trying to get that all working again. Everybody, thank you for joining us for the Big Apple Hockey Bar Talk, where we gauge our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. And there's a nice pure hockey, uh, a pure hockey water <laughs> bottle. You know, that's not a sponsor. We could always use sponsors. No. Please, we need money. <laughs> pure hockey, if you're, if you're listening, please. But if so, if you're confident about something, you want to buy everybody around. If you're not that confident, oh, I just need a shot. And if you're just OK, oh, I'll have a beer. So we're going to start with some of the news that was made today. Vitaly Kratsov has been loaned to Tractor and his loan signals the end of his time as a New York Ranger. Mr. Filkowski, I go to you. We are buying rounds. If this was only some vodka with this, we would have Red Bull and vodkas for everybody. But yeah, um, I'm buying around on this. It's just, he's done. He's done. And you know what the sad part is? You have a team with an anemic offense that needs right wing depth, especially after you traded your best right winger away for a bottom six winger. And don't get me wrong. I practice nuance. So I love Sammy Blay so far, but I still hate the Butch Navich trade because you could have gotten Sammy Blay for a prospect and a third round pick or something else. So yeah, um, this team start for offense. They mishandled yet another top 10 pick and now he doesn't want to play for them. He's done after, especially after Gerard Gallant reached out, what was it about a month back or so? and stated that he uh, tried to get Vitaly Kravtsov to rejoin the team. Could it, You could have had your guy come in. Uh, out There's probably a 0.001% chance that he rejoins the Rangers. So I'm buying around here. Anthony? Um, so Oliver Wallstrom looks pretty good right now, huh? You <laughs> son um, of a bitch. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny when when he scored that goal against Nashville. When you said what a shot that was, and like this is just going to probably grind the gears of a lot of Ranger fans who just. Do you want me to 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 go over that. there and punch you? Is that what you're <laughs> looking for well, right now? Um, Coco, jump I, right I, in the car and drive out there. <laughs> you got to go. You got to go round. I I know with you know today's comments, you know, kind of you know PC type of comments and you know whatnot. They said the right things, kind of left the door open, but. Um, I see it going the way of Elias Anderson. You get loaned out, you eventually get traded. Um, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, whether it come the the trade deadline, where maybe the Rangers are in it and they, you know, they want to get some scoring, they use him as a piece, or in the summertime they move him. Um, I think it's it's just inevitable. But in the meantime, this at least this move allows him to at least play, um, you know, in the second best league in the world. I guess you could say. Um, and hopefully, you know, he produces and maybe that kind of ups his trade value and interest even more. But um, I would I would be shocked if he ever plays a game for the Rangers. You know, I want to buy around just to be just to agree and say, I don't I'd be shocked if he plays. But I'm going to go beer. And the reason why I'm going to do that, I'm going to get a nice big one that covers Anthony's face and mine. Uh, I want to use this for an example. Where's Vladimir Tarasenko playing right now? St. Louis. 
He's still in St. Louis, even though he asked for a trade, he vehemently wanted out. Sometimes these situations, I know you're you're sighing, Phil, but I sometimes these situations have a way of fixing themselves. If he goes through the KHL season, let's say this is a possibility. He goes through the KHL season. The Rangers really need help on the right wing. They then bring him over. They guarantee him a spot. They put him on the right wing on a better line than Brett Howden and who gives a rat's ass. And by the way, <laughs> also Brett Howden. Um, and, the, and the Rangers actually get him and he flourishes. Then you just save the entire thing. It's not likely going to happen. I don't see it happening, and it's uh, it's it's very very yeah. Very there's a possibility, but you got to remember they've played games with him twice now, and you have a general manager who lets his emotions get in the way of doing business. So there's an obvious axe to grind at this point, and he's and yes, Ariana brings up a, a, a good one. Druan was another example for Tampa, and yeah, and how they got Sergachev out of that. Stephen and Tyler talked about that on Wardy yesterday. So yeah. uh, um, I would tell you right now, yes, it is possible. But when you have an organization that doesn't know how to handle personalities like this one does, that personnel, that that chance is very, very slim. I would say microscopic at best. Well, by the way, and you just mentioned who talked about it? Stephen and Tyler. Yeah, it dropped the end and it, you know. No, I said. Read emotions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God. Yeah, no, I was going that direction with the joke. So there you go. So um, more bad jokes from Mark, everybody. <laughs> so on the topic of I feel like punching Gordy Clark in the face right now, the Rangers should move on from Philip Hedel. Actually, I'm going to go Anthony first. Um, I'm going to go beer. Um, I, I think uh, I think that it might be a little. Too early, but uh, I think uh, it, the, the frustrating part is he has he has offensive skill. He has the stick handling ability. He has the puck skills. Um, I just don't know if he's going to do enough to where he could be responsible enough to be that prototypical third line center. I, I don't. I think for him to flourish, he has to be you know at least the number two center. And on the Rangers, I mean that's not happening this year with Zibanejad and Strom. Um, but again, he, he's a, he's another guy that I could see the Rangers moving uh, at some point, whether it be in the summer or whether they, I mentioned Kraftsoff, maybe the trade deadline. There's there's someone available, um, and they dangle Heedle as one of the pieces. Um, but I don't I don't think they have to at any point. They don't have a gun to their head there. Um, but I, I think he is a prime candidate if they wanted to upgrade the roster. I think he's a guy that could be used to do so. But um, I don't think it's anything pressing to where it could be something that they, you know, have at the forefront here and they're actively trying to do. Um, but I, I could see it happening at some point. Uh, I'm going to jump in right on top of that. What uh, Ariana saying, uh, everything I liked about Filipino when I first saw him playing, I, I don't see anymore. I don't see the decisiveness. I don't see, I still see the skill skills there. And we know he's raw. He's a project, but I think he's probably a wing. Um, he, I thought he was going to develop more into like David Krejci. He's not. And it, does he have the toughness to be the Rangers' third line center? Or can they elevate him to second line center? Because it seems like every time they try to do it, it's not happening. <coughs> because the, the, the Rangers also got another problem because uh, there's a bit of a donut hole at the se- the, the uh, second line center too. So we're, uh, we're that's a different day to talk about him. But Philk. Oh, sorry. Beer was what I was saying. Felk. I'm going to go with a beer on this one, too, because I'm I i, I I'm with Ariana. I, I think that he, he doesn't have a future as a center. And it, this team has problems at the wing. And obviously, Barkley Goodrum does not belong in a top six role. I don't care what line he's on. So would it be an idea to have Barkley Goudreau as a third-line center with Alexi Lafreniere and Sammy Blay and then have Philip Heedle play wing with Chris Kreider and Mika Zibanejad? Because whatever's going on with these guys, they need another guy who can handle the puck and drive the play a little bit. Philip Heedle could be that guy. 
I had another suggestion, which I think we'll get into in a little bit. You have a tweet on that from me, by the way. Um, but yeah. from the outside, but I think if there's anything that needs to be done, I think Philip Peel needs to go to the wing in that spot and Barkley Goudreau needs to, to get the hell out of the top six because he's an offensive black hole and can't be there. So uh, beer here. Well, I should have brought this up during the Rangers thing, but we'll bring it up right now. And this was the tweet from a uh, Mr. John Falkowski that if this keeps up, the Rangers should be calling Arizona about Phil Kessel sooner than you think. You cannot have zero production from your right wings. And as clear as day that he makes advantage that needs another play driver. I could have had Phil read this, but instead I started reading it and I really am just an idiot. So <laughs> Phil, Phil finish that, I, that thought. It's just the, Phil Kessel just makes a lot of sense. The team needs an experienced right winger who can skate, who can handle the puck, who can shoot. Uh, I know a lot of people are not going to be happy about that because, oh, well, he's Mr. Hot Dog and he doesn't play defense <laughs> and so on. And I, I think that, one, he's going to cost nothing because he's a 34-year-old unrestricted free agent to be. Um, is he going to be the same player that he was in Pittsburgh? Probably not. But if he's a guy that could come in and score, you know, 20, 25 goals for this team for the rest of the year and then, you know, give you a, a, a 50 to 60 point pace and be just something that could help me because of Benajad out on that line, then is it really that big of a deal to, to give it a shot considering that you really don't have a whole lot of, whole lot of internal options? Good point. And yes, uh, I think Arizona is going to deal him way before the trade deadline. Here's my question for you. Does it matter that he's another right-handed shot? I don't think it does really all at this point. Because here, here, here's the issue. Chris Kreider's a, a left-handed shot on the left wing. I, I mean, he's not a one-timer type guy. Nope. Phil Kessel's also not a one-timer type guy. The only guy that's really a one-timer guy on that line is me. He's a yeah. We just need another player that can come in and help facilitate any bit and take a little bit of the load <laughs> off of Zibanejad's shoulders. And I know that some people will say, oh, well, the analytics say that he's not really good at that. Well, do the analytics also tell you that Arizona is a walking tire fire <laughs> where guys like Clayton Keller have been awful since his rookie year and that nobody's on that team anymore, that Connor Garland's gone, Christian Dvorak's gone, Christian Fisher hasn't lived up to anything. that. Well, he well, well this is where I got to stop you because I'm going to need you to keep that energy for about five seg uh, five topics after this. <laughs> so so store that energy. If it's Metroid Dread, you're pressing down in order to do that. Um, because we got to go back to Mr. Anthony Laraga right now. And the Islanders' stop and start schedule will make it difficult for this team to get in a routine. Go. Uh, yeah, um, I, I'm going to go with a round. Um, I think it's not prime. Like I said earlier, I, I think, I think it's good in the aspect of the players personally. They, you know, they get to go home and, you know, see their kids and their family. Um, a lot of the Islander players, older guys, they have kids and they have, you know, families and stuff. So that part's good. But um, so early in the season, again, you know, it's like I mentioned earlier, you know, it's not like they played, you know, 50 games halfway into the season and they get this break, you know, they just started. So as it is, they're starting to feel their legs and get going and, um, when you have long breaks like that, I, I think it definitely affects your your rhythm and your ability to really get to the top of your game faster. Um, you know, the good part is, you know, this is really this is really the end of it. Um, you know, after this to, today, they finally play Montreal tomorrow, and then they have a back to back with Winnipeg and uh, Minnesota on Saturday and Sunday. Um, so, like I said, it is ending, but I think uh, it has hindered them. On the flip side of that. They are still managed to be three zero and two in the last five games, so hopefully they can you know keep that momentum going into Montreal and take advantage of a bad team and you know beat them and and then just from there you know take off, finish out the road trip, and then come home to some home cooking. And that arena is on the twentieth is going to be unbelievable. So, um, like I said, it's towards the end of it, but I, I think it's definitely affected their you know their kind of mojo, if you will. Phil. 
Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm buying around on this because of the fact that you, when you play for a coach like Barry Trotz, who's demanding very X's and O's oriented, major attention to detail, you need to be playing. It, it, like Anthony said earlier on, it, it's pra- – and you even made the point, like an older team wants to be playing games, not practicing, and a younger team like the mm-hmm. Rangers could use the practice. Yeah, with the Islanders, they need to be playing games. And with Barry Trotz, you want your players to be in that mode and to, to be fighting the fight every day. And that's when the Islanders start to play their best hockey is when they start getting those consistent reps in those games and getting into their system. And everybody's bought in and everybody's back in midseason form. So, yeah, you, you definitely need to be playing a lot more games than not. So I'm buying around on this. Um, I'm going to buy around on this too. And I'm just going to change gears as well because the gears I'm changing to, we're focusing on right now. And yes, I made the point about that. They would rather be playing games and seeing their families. I'm going to go past this road trip for them because you like the month of December because every Thursday night, the Islanders, there's five Thursdays, by the way, in December, the Islanders have a home game. We'll be figuring out which one of those we're going to go to soon. Uh, the Then you have January where they're jam-packed with, with – with, I mean, the most they have off in January in one shot is two days. Then they go to the Olympic break. So then there's 17 days off. And presumably, Pelik, Varlamov, um, uh, Matthew Barzell, maybe Anders Lee. That's the, the, there's a bunch of guys that are going to go. So the rest of the team ain't going to be skating. And then Mm -hmm. in March, again, they have one three day off period. And then they, uh, they don't see four days off in a row until April. So there's their, their schedule is jam packed post Olympic break. That's not what you need for an older team. So the good thing is they know how to handle it. They got one of the best coaches in the league and they already have that planned. So uh, it, it's, it's going to make it difficult, but they can, but again, they're all veterans. They've all been through this before. Obviously Zach Parise, Zidane Chara, all these other guys. So it's a, it's a good point that Ariana makes there. I yeah. mean, and I, I, I really do think it can. Um, the, the other thing that I would, that would work against this theory would be if the Islanders went out and actually got themselves another capable top four defenseman. So if you if you could do that, that would go a long way towards helping them. Lou's got to work on that. I don't know who would really be available at this point. Matias Elkholm, like I said, would have been the perfect target for them. But and now he's, he's not. He's off the market. But it, 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 we really don't know who else is available as of right now. But that could change in you know in a couple of months at least. So. All right, so that's our thoughts on the Rangers and the Islanders in our Bar Talk segment. You got other uh, topics you want to ever throw in there? Throw them down below. We'll talk about them. And also, um, just what do you think? Stop and start, start and stop, let us stop and start schedule. But Tyler Kratzoff going back to track there, or and he's done with the Rangers, or and or they should say they say they say they should say goodbye to Philip Hedel. I don't understand what's going on in my brain right now. So. What's the wrong with this Medulla Oblongata? (laughs) If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.